Alright guys, welcome to your 27th biology video, and in this video, we're going to be talking about enzymes. Pretty freaking fun word to say. Now, what happens in your cell is, your cells need new chemicals, they need new molecules all the time in order to do different things. Now, whenever a cell needs a molecule, it either A, has to find it floating around the cytoplasm somewhere, B, it has to break down a larger molecule, and then it might use that smaller piece for something, or C, it puts together smaller molecules to form a larger one that it needs, such as, you know, maybe it's forming proteins or something. Now, since all of these chemical reactions are taking place in your cell, what needs to happen is your cell just can't wait around for these reactions to happen by chance because you know whenever your cell needs energy or it needs to form a new molecule it can't just wait randomly for it to happen it needs to happen whenever it needs to happen so that's why enzymes come in handy now what enzymes pretty much do is they act as a catalyst and we already know that a catalyst is just something in chemistry that speeds up a chemical reaction so then your cells pretty much have more control over the chemical reaction and they can make them occur faster rather than waiting around all day for these chemical reactions to happen naturally and randomly. So an enzyme can actually look like anything in your body. Let me just go ahead and draw this as something with a unique shape. So this is your enzyme right here. Just go ahead and label it. Now on your enzymes they have something called active sites. Now, I know if you were to look at an enzyme under a microscope, it, would, it wouldn't look like this, but let me just go ahead and draw a unique shape in active site. And this is just uh, to give you guys an example of what an active site is. Of course, if you were to look at it under a microscope, these chemicals would look, you know, it would pretty much look like a blob of chemicals, like in, you know, whatever. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to draw is these two little triangles. And anyways, I'm getting kind of sidetracked here. An active site is pretty much the area where a molecule attaches to, and whatever molecule goes right here, that's going to be the molecules that are involved in the chemical reaction, and the enzyme, of course, is responsible for speeding up whatever molecules are reacting in the active site. So say that we have a random molecule around here. Oh, how convenient. It looks like it's going to fit perfectly in the active site. So this is our molecule right here, and I'm actually going to write substrate underneath it. Now, why did I write substrate instead of molecule? Well, actually, whenever we're talking about enzymes, the molecule that fits in or attaches to the active site is what we call the substrate. So let me go ahead and draw step two of this enzyme process which would look something like this. This is the same enzyme I'm drawing, but now instead of an empty active site, like right here, what we have is this substrate, and we'll say that this substrate is like a type of sugar or something, it doesn't really matter. So now this substrate or molecule attaches to the active site right here. I'll draw my arrow, right there. So now our substrate binds to the active site, and what's gonna happen in step three step one, step two, and this will be, <laughs> I'm getting kind of uh, crooked here, <laughs> but nonetheless, this is step three right here. So what's gonna happen is, you know, whatever chemical reaction takes place, and I say whatever chemical reaction because there are a ton of enzymes and they're responsible for several different chemical reaction. There isn't just one enzyme in your body that's responsible for speeding up one chemical reaction. There's a bunch of different types of enzymes. We're going to be talking about that later on. But it pretty much takes whatever molecule this is, whatever the substrate is, and it makes it react in its own way depending on if it's creating a molecule or breaking it up. We'll say that this breaks apart the sugar into smaller, I don't know, maybe glucose molecules. So that's basically what it does. What it does, Instead of having this chemical process happen naturally, the enzyme is responsible for speeding up or catalyzing the reaction. So step number four, of course, would be this. It would be your enzyme. And the enzyme, and this is another key thing that you want to take away. At the beginning, at step number one, and at the last step, which is step number four, 
your enzyme is always the same. So remember that your enzyme is always the same at the beginning and at the end of your chemical reaction. Your enzyme doesn't change at all, not chemically, so it's free to do another, you know, chemical process, catalyze another chemical reaction. So just remember that. Whatever enzyme you started with, that's what you have to end with, and that is pretty much the definition of an enzyme. If this enzyme were to change, then it wouldn't be an enzyme, it would just be a chemical and part of a chemical reaction. But that pretty much is uh, what it does. The final product, oh, 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 sorry, I got some hair in my throat. The final product, of course, would be different because uh, if it's the same thing, then it wouldn't be an enzyme at all because it didn't catalyze any chemical reaction. But basically, that's what happens. In your enzyme process, it starts with an empty active site right here. And the active site is just where the substrate attaches to so it can, you know, pretty much catalyze the reaction as you see right here. And then once your enzyme speeds up the reaction or catalyzes it, your substrate is going to turn into two different molecules. So you have your final product, which is different than the original substrate. However, your enzyme right here is the exact same as it was whenever it started. Now, just as a little fun fact, and this is going to help you guys a lot whenever you're trying to remember it. So say that this example right here was maybe for, I don't know, breaking up a complex sugar like this. We'll say that this is, I don't know, lactose. And what we ended up with is two simple glucose molecules. So with that being said, uh, let me go ahead and show you guys an example of this. Anything that ends in ACE or any enzyme that ends, ends in ASE usually gives a clue as to what the function is. For example, lipase. This would be an enzyme that breaks up lipids or fats. So ASE gives you a clue that it's an enzyme that breaks up something with lip. That's your clue. In this case, it would be lipids, fats. Um, another thing would be like this example right here would be a lactase and this would just be an enzyme that breaks up of course lactose and we already know what lactose is from the other tutorials but basically just remember ASE whenever you see that then you generally want to think that it's an enzyme in the beginning part of the word is going to give you a clue as to what kind of function the enzyme performs so there you go, there's your real quick tutorial on enzymes. Just remember that they start and end with the same exact enzyme, so then your enzyme is free to go and you know catalyze another chemical reaction. The molecule that bonds or attaches to the active site is called the substrate, and the substrate turns into the final product, which is of course different than the original substrate. So hopefully I didn't confuse you guys too bad. Thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.